Hey, uh, good afternoon. Dan here at StockMarketMentor.com. I'm just sending out this intraday video because I am unavailable this afternoon and evening. Um, I want to go back to core mining. I'd mentioned this yesterday because it was in such a great squeeze pattern. I mean, the day before, all it offered was just possibilities. And then yesterday, high volume breakout. We love to see these. By the way, members, um, don't blow off the strategy session that I'm sending you intraday. I've got four or five stocks that look just like this and they're doing really well. And by the way, yes, if you're not a member and you're watching this video, I did just tease it. I did. I'll admit it. I'll acknowledge it. It's true. Um, I just said that because number one, it's true. But number two, I'm hoping to entice you to say, do you know what? Maybe I'll go ahead and take a take a free look. I think they're giving me one of them their free trials for 30 days and I can sign up, immediately log in and see if Dan knows what he's doing and if he does, see if I can make some money. And then when I do that, maybe figure I'll stick around for a while and join the uh, mentor trading tribe. So yes, that's why I said that. Anyway, so... Um, Coeur d'Alene, as it used to be known, um, broke out yesterday and the word was that um, some really smart trader had sold the July, not June, the July $6 calls at 20 cents. And that seemed like a really smart thing to do, like over 14,000 of them, um, almost $300,000 worth of premium they took in. Well, that's not really working out too well. Uh, for them, which is tends to be why I always um, am suspicious about those analysis that just kind of trade along with knucklehead um, that just threw a bunch of money at something. Because by the way, this is an aside. Um, I know a guy, used to know him. I had to kick him to the curb because he kept asking me too many um, uh, questions about trading. And he had more money, had more money um, than a lot of states in the union here. And he was a big trader, really, really big trader. Although actually he wasn't a big trader, he was a big gambler. And yes, I'm talking to you when I'm saying this. He was a big gambler. The only difference between him and a lot of people who trade is big. He had a lot of money. The interesting thing is, and I'm morphing into coaching right now, the interesting thing is the folks that have the least amount of money are those that should be gambling the least. You have much less margin for error if you have a small portfolio. And by the way, it could be that um, the reason why you're not a member of Stock Market Mentor is because you have a small portfolio. And I get that. I totally get that. Um, if you can't uh, afford, if you can't afford it, then you can't afford it. And don't apologize for it. Just keep watching these videos and I'm going to do the best I can. But the thing is, if you don't have a lot of money, you shouldn't be gambling. You shouldn't be that guy. And yeah, I'm talking to you on this. Well, I know I'm trading too aggressively or I know I'm taking a lot of risk here. But once I make a bunch of money, um, then I'll stop doing that and I'll trade right. You know, you got to think about that. Really? Is, is that really a good trading approach? Because I got to tell you, if I'm going to make a boatload of money by gambling and I feel really confident about that, that is how I'm going to trade. So you're the ones that should be focusing on managing your risk, not counting your, you know, 100% um, annual returns. Um, but anyway, back to this guy. So he liked to take big bets. He didn't know squat about trading, but he knew how to buy calls and he knew how to buy out of the money calls. On one of the one of the stocks um, a while ago, he placed such a huge bet on um, options, on out of the money options, such a massive trade on out of the money options that he actually made fast money. They were talking about the trade on fast money. And I think it was Cree. It was several years ago. Might have been somewhere in here. But he bought a gob of calls, out of the money calls. 
he had asked me about it first and I said I go like that is don't even do that yeah but I know something he, he knew something and so he went ahead and placed that trade anyway and I just remember watching that discussion uh, on CNBC and I thought if these people just knew what a buffoon this guy was um, as far as trading if they knew they would not be talking about this they would actually be taking um, the other side of that trade so my point is is that when it comes to trading the size of the trade does not equate to the intellect of the trader you have to make your own decisions and here on this one if you were to have gone along with that trader and sell those July six dollar calls for 20 cents well right now I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know because you've been looking at it all day those same calls are bid at 40 cents and they're offered at 45 so if you you've sold those calls and now you have to buy them back you've got to pay over a hundred percent for them so you made about 300,000 yesterday you're down about 600,000 today not a good way to be trading and what I mean by down about 600,000 is you had 300,000 then it goes to zero and now you owe 300,000 so be careful about these types of things go ahead and just trade according to the chart not according to anything else so anyway and by the way if you're somebody who trades really big and you gamble and all that stuff you know don't let my quote disparaging remarks um, offend you it has nothing to do with anything personal it's not a personal thing it is strictly a trading thing because I've said this for years this is not about trading this is about managing risk you've got to be managing your money in the market like an insurance company that's literally the way you need to be thinking about it get with your trading options get out the deltas and the thetas and the gammas um, implied volatility um, odds that the option is going to expire in the money or out of the money those are your actuarial tables okay you need to be familiar with those just like Warren Buffett is on his insurance companies that is how you should be trading you should be thinking about um, being an insurance company managing risk insure insurance companies think about this they don't even take huge losses they'll take losses but they don't take huge losses when a natural disaster like Hurricane Katrina hits do you know why because there's such a thing as reinsurance otherwise known as diversification you could look it up okay um, that's it for this very long video that was meant to be short um, hang tough and hope to see you guys over on stock market mentor